Hey, I'm Mike Acosta. And I'm Jim Stout. And welcome back. And if this is the first video, well, welcome. Hey, we're checking out the brand new Roland Boutique VP03 vocoder. Now, we already did a video on the TR09. Mm -hmm. We did one on the TB03. Mm -hmm. And now we get to show you the unboxing of the brand new VP03 vocoder. And this one is based off the VP330. Um, and again, they go back and they, they put the original instrument on there and they, uh, you know, a little bit of history about it. Um, and it is fascinating. And this is definitely, um, uh, you know, super, super famous wow. sounding vocoder. Um, now, I actually never got to, I never owned one of those. Uh, the only time I ever got to use one was when we were working at Roland. And I think it was for a NAM show where we, I think it was for the V-Synth, and we were comparing the, we were comparing the vocoders and so forth. And then after that, I think like two or three years later, Roland released, I think it was like the VP550? The 550 and the 770. Um, the 550 was way underpowered, in my opinion. The, the 770 sounded really good. Yeah, it was, um, uh, it was at a NAMM show, they released yeah. a, a kind of like a reincarnation of it, yeah. and the strings were really good on it, and I got to play with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. but. Have always heard really great things about you know the VP330 vocoder. Yeah, some of the famous things uh, uh, like the original Tron soundtrack, you know the choirs and those kind of things. Um, yeah, they were they were really. Uh, Chromio is a huge. Oh yeah. Of these guys, so uh, they use the uh, Talkbox and, and this vocoder quite a bit and all their stuff. So so far, this looks really cool. It actually has um, those colored buttons that we saw on some of those products, you mm -hmm. know, from the 80s and stuff, like on the. TR-808 and yeah. so just like on the original you have the colored buttons yeah. there and you have green yellow so again over the face plate here looks really really cool um, it's got nice rocker switches here which is really cool you've got the mod strips and XLR um, balanced input. input mic input on the front there I wonder yeah it's got a uh, it's got a uh, phantom power too nice very cool that's a uh, I was curious about that. And again, it's the same uh, same build, uh, the USB, the volume, phones, output. This one does not have a mix input. I there's, guess they had to use that for this. There's something else in this box. <gasps> what is it? I don't know. Is it a microphone? Is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's cool. All right, roll in. All nice. right, so you get a microphone with it. I feel like Bob Barker. Price is right. Survey says. <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> I think that's the wrong show. I think, uh, oh, that, that was Family Feud. Was it? Yeah. 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 Anyway. Same thing, dude. They all have those like little thin little stinger. microphones and, you know. That's all right, very so cool. it's cool. And you get an extra windscreen on it, which is pretty cool because, again, obviously, you know, sometimes uh, you may have somebody else using it or singing into it, or you may have a female using it and her lipstick gets all over it and it's pretty damn gross <laughs> man like i used to hate that microphones and they have lipstick residue it was the sickest thing i that's gross. absolutely hated it that's gross so very cool you get an extra uh windscreen there so the, uh now one of the things that i noticed right off the bat here is that it doesn't have that little pop-up shell like the uh the tr09 and the tb03 did um so you need uh, the k25, k25 keyboard, keyboard module keyboard. with this so and we actually have one of those yeah, we have. So, uh, have everybody's seen that already. So it, that's basically you slide it into the keyboard attachment, and now you have keys to it. And so I'm guessing yeah. that it's got the ribbon cable. Yeah. So right in here mm. is where you would connect the K25 uh, keyboard module right into it, and then you have full keys control. But if you have a MIDI controller or anything like that, obviously you've got your MIDI inputs in and outs on the back. So really, really simple to just you know, connect it to whatever MIDI controller you have and, you know, keyboard controller and just start, you know, playing away. Now, I'm a huge fan of vocoders and the only, I've, I've had an S, uh, had a, I've had a 350, which is the, the rack mount version. Mm. Um, and then I used to have a, a Korg VC-10. Um, but the, the VP-330 um, uh, always kind of eluded me. I mean, I've, I've, I've played them a bunch and, and, and sampled them and stuff, but uh, they're, uh, they are very expensive and very rare. So I, I know the uh, the original VC2 was was really good. So um, let's uh, let's have a listen to it. Yeah. The uh, the only vocoders that I've actually ever owned and I still own is the uh, Novation Nova. So now that was a six part multi timbral uh, synth from Novation. It was mm -hmm. called the Nova Laptop. 
mm. uh, because it was just you know a little desktop module and whatnot, and you had the rack gears for it. But it did have a really really good vocoder built in, and it had the super analog, you know, technology that mm. you know that they were touting at the time. But I always describe that unit as like this liquidy kind of sound because mm -hmm. of the reverbs, and it was a really cool uh, vocoder. So yeah, I'm. Uh yeah, I I always thought that the the VP three thirty had had that sound. Oh yeah, and, I mean, and that yeah. was the sound of, of a vocoder. Whenever I you know it really you know want to hear one, it's it's got that super cool robotic texture to it. And you were hearing a lot of stuff like, I don't know exactly. I know the VP three thirty was used on a lot of like the uh, late eighties, when that whole electronic funk sound was coming out, like Africa mm -hmm. Bombada. And mm -hmm. then, you know, g groups like Twilight 22, Electric Kingdom, and all these, mm -hmm. you know, kind of tracks where you were hearing all this robotic, you know, kind of stuff. And that's what really turned me on to, like, vocoders back then and stuff. So Yeah, really I, think, really I think for me it was Funky Town. Ah. <laughs> Funky Town, I, I, remember, I remember first time I ever heard Funky Town when I was a kid. I was just like, what is that sound? And uh, I was amazed with it. So I think, um, uh, yeah, let's plug it in and have a listen. All right. We're back. We have yes. audio dialed in now. Like I said, it does come with the gooseneck microphone, which I think is a really, really cool addition to it. So we've got that dialed in. Uh, again, USB uh, is powering the unit. You get audio and MIDI through USB, so that way you can easily track the stuff into your DAW environment. It shows up as its own audio interface. Uh, stereo mini out. Which is, we got uh, connected, and so let's check out some of the sounds. Yeah, so I think one of the the, the first things that was really cool about this uh, were the string and the and and the, the choir sounds in here, and and granted they you know they don't sound like you know like an uh, like an Omnisphere choir or something like that. Yeah, that's but it's apples and oranges. This is 1979, but it's got it's got that certain texture to it. So the first thing we'll listen to is going to be the strings. Um, I guess probably the same four note polyphony. But that's that classic string machine sound. That's, they sound good. And I think yeah. that was one of the one of the concerns I've seen about with you know the speculations of you know Roland releasing uh, you know a vocoder and, and on Reddit you know a lot of the things that I saw were, you know, people were concerned about the string sounds and if it was going to have that. And mm -hmm. it does have those string sounds in here and it sounds yeah. pretty, pretty good. So let's, uh, so, got that chorus, that, that ensemble chorus. The ensemble chorus. chorus. Very cool. Let's have a listen to the choir sounds here. And we'll do uh, the mail first. <laughs> Might be take off the ensemble. So that's that's it raw. So let's check out the female again. This is uh, raw. We took off the the ensemble chorus on it. So let's put the two together. So let's do male female. Yeah, on the line in the chorus. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, again, 
as you start to, you have to really just keep in the mind frame of where this at, where this is at in terms of the price point. Let's go back. Let's add the two together. So just real quick, and let's move your hands out of the yeah. shot real quick. So we did end up uh, hooking it up to the K25, uh, you know, keyboard module here. So you can see it's got the keys. It's connected. It fits right in, and then it has the stand to elevate it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need it. If you already have, again, a keyboard MIDI controller, you've got MIDI connections on the back, and you can use any keyboard MIDI controller that you would like. But if you want, you know, kind of this look, and it actually yeah. does look pretty cool, like with the K25 all put together. It's a whole little miniaturized kind of thing. I think it works. I, I think it absolutely works. I think, I mean, you know, put it on top of, like, you know, the, the piano player, the piano bar, and they've got their instant kind of, you oh, know, yeah, vocal right synth sounds. Um, but I think... Uh, so these are the strings. So we've got the tones on it. A little Mellotron-ish kind of wiggle happening. Yeah. Well, we've got the ensemble on it as well. So yeah. we're just adding the, the choir. So you've got vibrato up here. You have control over the rate, the delay time, the depth, which is really cool. So it looks like in the in the memory section in here, you've got different chord uh, uh, programs in here. Oh, wow. Which would make sense if you're using this with the K25. Cool. Well, the most important aspect of a vocoder is how the vocoder sounds. Yeah. So uh, we've been messing around with the strings and stuff. But so uh, just in case, if you, if you didn't catch that really quick, um, with the presets on the front panel here, you do have like a dedicated chord mode. So because you are using a 25 mm -hmm. key, obviously, if you're trying to get around and do a lot of chords, um, and especially if you're using this as an accompaniment to something mm -hmm. else, like we're talking about like a piano you know, a bar player at a, at a little lounge or something like that. Having that chord mode is kind of cool because you could dial in the specific chord that you need and then you just have to hit one key yeah. to do all your vocal phrasing while you're playing something else, so. House records right there. So let's, uh, let's have a li listen to the vocoder here. Um, check one, two, let's see. Bring up so the we got the, that's the direct with this. And again, check, we haven't check, touched check. the manual yet, so again, we're just kind of... Check. All right. So we've got the vocoder ensemble. Oh. Check. Oh. check one, two, three. So we're still on chord mode. Check one. Check one. Check one. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Check one, awesome, that is, uh, that is pretty spot on right there. Here we go. And then add in with the human voice. Here we go, here we go. That's, that's pretty interesting right there. Check one, can we see if we can get uh, that's the ensemble. Well, of course, you have to look at the tone so it brightens it up a little bit more. Uh, take the string out and got the direct line so it'll mix in your real voice with it if you want. It's got the vibrato, so let's see if we take that so, out. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. The delay times down, the rate. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my only th my only thing like you know we were talking about this a little while ago is that I wish they would have just had like a dedicated octave button on here because it's the same thing on the JP08 mm -hmm. and with the JU06 it's like this button combo you have to hold down this button and then one of these buttons will shift you know the octave down but yeah, I, so the one thing I'm not seeing here is a line input. Um, 
you know, because a lot of times, uh, you know, when we'd, we'd be rocking vocoders and stuff, we would just spit a track out and then we would send it back in and send it MIDI mm -hmm. and then it would, you know, we'd, then we would print the vocoder line. So um, you've got to use a, a mic input on this. There's not a line input on it. Well, we probably have to um, research it a little bit more because might we, be we, we don't USB. know. It might be able to do it through USB, yeah. and we don't know that yet. So again, like I said, they're mm -hmm. still developing, you know, the um, the OS on this, and there's definitely some more firmware updates that are going to be coming for this. So it's definitely something that it's maybe possible, um, but we'll have to check in on but, that. But again, I mean, it's like we didn't we didn't even crack the manual on any no. of this gear, and we we're immediately able to get on it and start making noise and start making music with it, um, which is. You know, can't be said for and Yeah, to get down to that really low kind of register. Vibrato. That's cool. So you have the touch strips here that make it easy to dial that stuff in. And I'm pretty sure there's other ways by, again, the, uh, <laughs> the classic <laughs> button combo push, hold, and, you know, to play twister. Down. You probably get something else that you can assign to the, to the control. I think I may just grab the manual and see what the combination is to switch the octave because I think I, I would it's like to hear yeah, what it would sounds like, like in the lower, the, lower, the lower octave for like a robot kind of oh, stuff. Let's see what, what is this? Yeah, the, the big map here trying to figure out and navigating where, where we, we are. are. Uh, strings, Connecting. chord memory, step sequencer, C2, but it doesn't really explain a whole lot. <laughs> Which isn't uncommon. Uh, you know, C2. C2. Keyboard is good. I can imagine splitting this thing. Pitch bending. So octave shift. Let's see, C1 mode. C2. Pitch shifting is here. They're in settings. God bless them, we can find the velocity curve settings, but. Okay. Ain't it? Shift one, check. One, two. <laughs> it's got it's got a sequencer, which is really cool. Um, and add in a so the sequencer, cool. yeah. So you can do some really cool things with that. Yeah, you can create some really cool melodic. Uh, background kind of stuff. I think would be very, very cool. Mm, I can definitely see uh, doing a, maybe a sample pack on this kind of stuff and yeah. sequence. Yeah. sequence. Stay out. tuned. Yeah, some really so, cool stuff. Step sequence vocoder lines. I think that would be um, brilliant. But I, as far as sound quality goes, I, I, it's it's it smashes anything else really in this price point, yeah. hands down. Yeah, the microphone um, is good. Uh, the strings sound pretty good. The ensemble effect sounds oh. nice and lush. Yeah. Um, there's definitely some uh, Mellotronish, you know, kind of sounds, the way that the, the voices and the strings are, you know, which is cool. I, I think it's a really good thing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, but the Mellotrons, we, we're using tapes and stuff, you know. It's oh, yeah. all completely different, but it, that, 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 it really it captures re that VP sound of the original 330 choirs and strings and, like, the, a lot of the original string machines. Um, so I think uh, it's, it's, it's definitely there, and, it, and it's just beautiful sounding when you get it. It's it's it, they're it's nice and lush. Yeah, you know, and I, so. again, I think you know, again, we're we're going back to the price point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, for under four hundred dollars, um, I don't you get think a vocoder you, like this. Yeah, I don't think you can beat it. No, uh, it, it sounds really good, and it's not just a vocoder. You get the strings and the ensemble stuff, the human voice. I mean, that's so the what original Roland, didn't have a yeah, sequencer. The Roland was known for that, so I think it's great that it's all built in there. The sequencer is cool, and then obviously, you know, the USB. You know, MIDI for streaming into mm -hmm. the DAW environment is going to make that a lot seamless. You know, more seamless in terms of getting the sound in there. It'll be interesting to see if they do add like a firmware update that will allow you to, you know, through USB maybe patch something else in to run it through. I uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I I think that would be pretty easy. Um, I think from a just a technical aspect, I think they had to use the normal mix in section for the microphone stuff. That's why there's not a mix in section on here. Um, because there's only so many inputs and outputs on a hardware board, uh, but through USB, I'm yeah, I'm willing to bet that you know, that's, that's how that's, that's how, how they did it on the VT on the IRA on the VT3. It didn't have um, mm -hmm. they didn't put MIDI on it, which was a huge <laughs> yeah miss on that, you know. But um, they then added an update that allowed you to send MIDI through USB. you know through USB. So 
it kind of for, for gigging live you know there's pr some workarounds but in the daw environment if you're tracking stuff it's easy yeah. to send your vocoder this is on a different level yeah you know? i mean the voice transformer it had like you know some gimmicky kind yeah of stuff it's in here. this it, it's apples and oranges yeah, yeah. It, it's this, very very different this is this is you know this has that instrument vibe to it yeah you and know? it has the look um, too like just mm -hmm. the the original like orange you know vocoder vp03 it's just like the original vp330 it, so i think overall the build quality on it is pretty good yeah um it's nice and solid i think it's great that it comes with the gooseneck mic um the sound quality is really good obviously the usb um you know for audio and midi mm -hmm. is, an, is another great addition as all the boutiques have that in there and again the price point it's under four I, I, you know, I, I think they've got a really another hit on their hands uh, with this because it's really nice to see the the boutique line being expanded, and um, I, I'm I'm personally a huge fan of the Ju06 now. Um, I think it's really, really, you know, really I, freaking close. I love um, the Ju06 and and everything that we've heard today, the the TR09, the TB03, and this. Uh, I, I haven't been disappointed in any of them. Yeah. I think they're all like they've all got a unique really, thing. Really and again, cool. it, and when you start finding yourself like, well, it doesn't really just stop for a second and yeah. remember the price point of where it's at. Yeah. And I think when you when you look at it from that perspective, it's like you can't beat it. There's no. you know, it's it's there's really nothing else to say. So again, Roland, great job. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our friends at Roland, uh, Igor, Len, and Chris Hallen for sending us this stuff over for us to get a uh, first look here on ADSR. Remember, subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel mm -hmm. so that you're constantly up to date with everything that we're doing, and you'll see more products like this. We'll have some more in-depth videos on these products soon. Uh, but again. Oh. This really, really yeah. great stuff. This will be, again, available at the end of September. We don't have exact map pricing Preserve, just yet, yeah. but they will be available at the end of September. You can find out more information on Roland. We'll also update um, on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, and other than that, I think, else? you know, it's just fun. I can't wait to, to sit around and play with this more and really kind of dive into it. And, um, but yeah, awesome. Thanks so much Thanks. for watching. And Thank make you. Sure, make sure you subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.